Okay, welcome to my studio again. My name's Dick Ensign. I'm a Tennessee artist, live in Pigeon Forge, Great Smoky Mountains. But today we're going to talk, we're not going to paint, but I'm going to show you something so important. If you're going to make a living or even a halfway living as an artist, these things you have to do. Part of it's marketing, but this is more important than the marketing right now. I'm going to show you how to take and uh, keep good records. And I do this. I'm not telling you something that I don't do. I have a record of every paint I've even painted, bad or good or whatever. But I have a, a record of it. The first thing you want to do, and we're talking about after you finish a painting now, okay? You've got a completed painting. Now, this is a little painting of my granddaughter. I had finished it. Now what am I going to do with it? Okay, I want to sell prints of it. Well, before I can sell prints of it, I want to take and do some record keeping so I can find it in the computer. So the first thing I do is, okay, do not sign your painting right away. Wait till you get all through with your record keeping. Wait till you scan it, the whole thing. So don't sign your painting in the beginning. Just wait, and I'll tell you why in a minute. First thing you do, do not sign your painting, okay, until after you scan it. Now, there's several ways you can scan it. You can take, and I've got a big 12 by 16 scanner, 12 by 18 scanner. If the painting is fairly large, I can scan it in two sections or three sections and piece it together. Okay, that's not a hard thing to do. Today, with a digital camera, okay, you can also set your digital camera up on a tripod, and you can take a picture of it. But you should have at least a 15 megapixel camera, nothing less and you get more colors that way. Now, if you're going to scan it with a scanner, flatbed scanner, make sure the scanner is nice and flat so when you put your picture on it, the thing will scan without being at an angle or tilted or whatever. Scanning, and this is the DPI you use for scanning, this 400 to 500 DPI. Nothing less than, don't go up to 8, 900, think you're going to get something better. No, you don't. The contrast, you lose contrast as you go higher. But the 400 to 500 DPI scanning, and if you're using a digital camera, use a 15 megapixel camera. Now, after you've taken your picture of your, of, your, of your painting, the next thing you do, you've got to set it up, assign a number to it. Keep a record of a number and also a title. Don't try to keep your titles as that's the way I'm going to look it up. You can't look up things by titles. You can look it up by number. You can reference to the title. So the first thing I do, and this is exactly the way I set up, set it up in a uh, uh, set up a spreadsheet in your computer, and all your computers today have free programs. You can get spreadsheets with them. First thing I do, I give a painting name. Okay, now this is called Mandy. Okay, put the size of it, the original size, which this is a 16 by 20. The next thing I do, I put the medium. It's an oil painting. The next thing I do is I put put it on a disc. Okay, after I get all through it, I'm going to put it on a disc. I'm going to number the disc, okay? This comes after you get through with all this record information. The date that you created it. I also put a little picture, a little thumbnail picture of the picture of the painting itself in here. And here's the important part. Assign a number to it. The number I use, the way I use it, I'll give you an example. D is my first number. That means Dutchman's Loft. That's the name of my business, okay? D, and then I sign 00001. You can go all the way up to 1,000 and go back and start it. You can get quite a few numbers like that. This right here is very important that you number it. You can find a number a quicker than you can find a reference. Now, if you can't remember the number, you say, okay, Mandy. goes right to Mandy and gives you the number. Keep all this on a spreadsheet. Next thing, after I get all this information done, I take an archive, okay, to a disc. Now, today we're using discs, or I'm using DVDs because they hold a lot more, but I found I've had a lot of bad DVDs, so I'm still using the standard disc. You can put quite a few uh, uh, paintings on a disc. Number your disc, this is disc number one. Put the date on it, and right here when I go to my, my uh, spreadsheet, I say, oh, it's on disc number one, okay? I'm up to about 400 discs on my painting. Now, some of those discs may only have two and three paintings on them. Some of them may have five or six. Some of them have 20. Some of them have two. That depends. But this is a good way to follow this, okay? If you follow this procedure, you'll always be able to keep track. I can go in. If somebody orders a print from me, 
and we print everything we do now, okay? Now, when you get all through with this, then sign your paint after you've done all the, the uh, legwork on it. I've had a, an example I gave you. A lady called me about a month ago from Canada, and she gave me the number of a painting because I have a catalog with my numbers in it. I said, okay, and she gave me the title. I said, okay, that agrees. Within a half an hour, it was shipped. She got it in two days up in Canada, okay? That's money in your pocket if you keep organized. Okay, that's the first thing you want to do. After you do all of this, sign your painting, put it away. Then there's another procedure you have to follow. And this is something that we start our painting with. So we'll just take this sheet away. The next one is called an organization and plan your composition. And this is for a new painting, okay? And I do this actually with Mandy. I did it with her. So my little granddaughter, she, now she was uh, five or six years old there. She's now in college studying to be a lawyer, which is good if I ever need a lawyer in about a year. Now, organize and plan your composition. We'll talk about that. And what we're going to do, this is going to be a series of little free lessons that you're going to get after we go through this process. Then I'm going to do these paintings and show you how we do it. Okay. Summertime, I take lots of pictures. When I'm out plain air painting, I take several, several pictures. I've probably... And I've got one model I use. I probably have got 10,000 pictures of her. Okay, so take plenty of pictures. So when the weather's not so good, you can sit and pull them out of your computer and paint, paint your studio. Okay, lay out your... I, I lay out my pictures in the computer before I even start them. This composition right here is laid out in a... And you can see the picture right over here. Give you a better view of it. Basically, this is the scene here. But what I did with this... And here's another picture of it right over here. And here's one over here, okay? This one is brought in a little bit closer. So I brought in that whole scene a little bit so I could, I worked it in the, in the computer the way I liked it, okay? So the first thing you want to do is look at it like that. <clears throat> now there's a program that you can get. It's a free program, but uh, it's, I, I get a kick out of the guys when they advertise. They said, well, if you like our program, Send us a dollar, we could buy a cup of coffee. Send us five dollars, we'll buy lunch. Send us ten dollars, we'll go out to eat. Great, very good program, and you can do different things in that program. It's called WWW Photo Sketch. It's a great program. You can take this picture that you shot out in the park or wherever you it might be, and put it through that program and get different effects. And I do this first to see how do I want to do my painting. What, what do I want to accomplish? Do I want to do a uh, watercolor? Do I want to do a pastel? Do I want to do a pen and pencil sketch? Do I want to do an oil painting, acrylic, or whatever? And it's got different uh, variations that you can try. But the first thing you want to do after you pick out the scene that you like, you make a value sketch. Now, you can sketch it by hand, or you can do it in the computer and use it. And that's it. The reason for that is you, you keep, it keeps the light constant, okay? The light's not changing on you, so you know where the light's always coming from. You can make a grayscale out of it, done in the same program, okay? And here I, is what they call a pen and ink with the program, with it, what it's going to look like. Here's one with colored pencils, and basically a pastel would look similar to this. Here's one done in oil painting. Here's an oil painting tonal. We're going to go through a lot of these different stages. I'm going to show you how to approach it and how to do it. Here's a watercolor painting. Okay, you can make an abstract out of it. So there's many different uh, ways that you can continue your painting. So anyhow, after you look at this and study it, get, get your uh, picture all in, in, into your computer on a spreadsheet, sign it when you're all done, and we're going to go into some painting after this. Now, I've just got, I've got a new camera I just bought. Now, they go up to 18 megapixels right now, and 18 megapixels is even better than a 15 megapixel camera for uh, shooting, especially if you want to shoot pictures of your, to set it up on an easel. And when you go to set it up, the best time to take a picture is early morning from the east and do it under a uh, little bit of a uh, porch or something like that. Okay. Anyhow, so I hope this will help you out. And uh, here again, my name is Dick Gensing. I live in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. You can go to my website, dickgensingartist.com or Write me, ask me questions, I answer all email. Dick Ensing at BellSouth.net. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.